Chapter 4 is one of the most important and often integral part of a research thesis or research dissertation. This is generally, this chapter is generally called the results and analysis chapter or the findings and analysis chapter. So we will briefly discuss its importance and the general structure and contents of chapter 4 in research thesis. So as I said, chapter 4 is one of the most important and often integral part of a research dissertation or thesis. And the reason for this is that it is actually a chapter where we present the outcomes of the whole research process. Or in other words, we can say that um, here is the product of the research process or response to the question of so what. So why is it that we have conducted the whole research project? It is because of the results or the findings in the chapter 4 that we have conducted the whole research process. So um, in social science researches, generally in, in a qualitative type of research, we call this section the finding section, but in generally in quantitative or experimental researches, we call this results. But um, in other cases, it depends on the particular pattern of the university or, or the college where you are studying. So maybe in some cases, findings or results both could be used, and in some cases, they, they could be taken as synonyms. So it depends. Now, the general structure of the chapter 4 um, will include generally these three main parts. So the introduction part, the results or findings part, and the discussion and conclusion part. Now, the introduction of uh, the introduction part of chapter four is, uh, is simply an introduction to the chapter, which actually means that although you might refer to the research topic or research objectives in the beginning of this chapter, but the introduction part of chapter four is actually introducing the reader to what is there in chapter 4. So what is it that is, uh, that is following the introduction, introductory part? So generally in introduction, what we say is that this chapter is basically reporting the findings or results of, um, of this particular study, and especially in the response to these objectives or research questions or hypotheses. So this is generally a paragraph or two paragraphs um, at maximum. After this, the second part of the uh, of chapter four is actually results or findings. So generally, as I said, um, generally findings we, we name this section findings if we generally have qualitative studies with textual based um, and data and with thematic analysis and findings that are presented in the form of themes. While if we have quantitative data um, or experimental studies, we will, use, uh, we will use the terminology of findings as a result of the quantitative analysis of our data or the data that, that we have got in numbers as a result of the experiments that we have conducted. Um, and so, um, generally, the results section is one of the most important one, and it is very important that we need to organize the results section very well, and especially in line with our research objectives or research questions or hypotheses. So generally, if we have qualitative studies, we will have research questions. And so, in line with those main questions and then sub-questions, we can thematically <clears throat> organize our findings. If we have quantitative studies, we will have hypotheses or research objectives. And so our quantitative findings that are generally presented in tabular forms, um, or so in tables or 
maybe in graphs, uh, but generally in, in the quantitative data is presented in tabular form. And again, each table should be in response to or each tabular representation of our data, of, of our findings should be in response to one or another of our research objectives or our research hypotheses. So if the researcher wants to organize the results or finding sections of chapter four well, they should continuously refer back to the main research objectives or research questions or research hypotheses. And so they, that referring back to the structure um, in our research objectives or research hypotheses or questions will help in bringing in logical organization and clear structuring in the kind of results or finding presentations in chapter four. So once the results or finding sections are presented in an organized way, in a structured way in line with our objectives, there is generally a conclusion section where we conclude, we generally give a brief conclusion of the whole chapter. But in some cases, uh, you might also include the discussion chapter, the discussion section in your chapter four, which actually means that once you have a clear picture of the findings and results of your, of your research, the next section is actually to discuss the findings, to critically analyze the findings, to rationalize the findings and results with reference to previous studies or the findings of previous studies or with reference to, uh, to situations or to theoretical background. So the discussion section is often um, an important section that is, uh, that is actually followed um, by that is that, that actually follows the findings or results section. And then after the discussion section, there is an overall conclusion of the chapter four, where we conclude the whole thing again in a paragraph or something. So to summarize, chapter four is one of the most important chapters or sections of a research thesis, mainly because this is what we have conducted the whole uh, structured and conducted the whole uh, research process for. You can say this is the fruit of the whole process of conducting the whole uh, uh, research. So uh, it is therefore very important that we need to organize this chapter very well. And so generally there should be an introduction to the chapter that this should be followed by the results and findings that are organized in line with our research objectives. Um, and so our findings and results should reflect responses to our research questions or answers in response to our research hypotheses. And then they should, follow, they should be followed by um, a discussion or a critical analysis or rationalization section of the findings and results. This indicates that these, the, the, the researcher has a deeper theoretical understanding and contextual understanding of the findings of the study that they have conducted. And lastly, there should be an overall conclusion of the chapter, which will be like a summary of the whole chapter so that the reader can find it easy to have a holistic picture of this chapter at the end. And lastly, um, it is very important that we need to write the cha this chapter like the rest of the thesis in academically correct uh, language so that the message that, that the reader gets is clear and precise.